Um, yeah, thanks for, for everybody being here. And um, really, um, there's so many parts that, that come together. That this, this is not a simple thing. There's a lots of moving parts to make this work. And um, as the warden said, how it started, and, and some of you haven't heard that story, um, it's a God thing. Um, we um, were talking at the ranch about training service dogs, and it, it really started uh, with Monica. Where's Monica? Oh, there we go, down at the end. And uh, Monica uh, worked for us at Thousand Hills Pet Resort and uh, took care of the office and all that. And uh, Monica had uh, been trained um, to train service dogs and had trained service dogs. And uh, she had a couple of dogs. And her uh, MS um, was progressive. And she's had several service dogs. And one day she said, we have a mentoring program that we do at the ranch. And um, our mentoring student, she said, why don't we have them maybe train a service dog? Oh, well, that's a great idea. So that's how it started with Monica and uh, Thomas. And when two of our students uh, were involved in that. And then Nicole wandered in one day uh, from Fresno. Somebody just told her she ought to see the place, and that was it. And we have a saying, people ask how we get our staff or our students or our dogs or all that. It's, it's kind of they just show up, it really is. And uh, Nicole showed up, and we just chatted a little bit. And she uh, had a lot of extensive uh, background with animals and uh, had a real passion for it. So we started talking, and then an opening came up at the pet resort. And we said, well, it's, it's not training service dogs, but you know, it'd take a little bit to get there. I think it took longer than, than we all thought to get there. Um, but after a few years, uh, she took over and we got the uh, service dog program going. But she went to a, a special seminar back east uh, on prison puppies. And she came back and she said, uh, yeah, she said, well, I was there. I met this lady from, uh, she said uh, she has a brother who lives in San Luis Obispo. And, all of that, and the lady asked, uh, were we training service dogs in the prisons? And uh, Monica said, or excuse me, Nicole said, um, no, we're, we're not, but we'd really like to. And this lady says, well, I'll just write the warden a letter. And like, who is this lady on the East Coast that's gonna write a letter to the warden and you know think that that's gonna open the door? Well, it's Sister Pauline, and if you know anything about service dogs in prison, she's the godmother of prison programs and back in the 70s got the first uh, program going in the prisons. And so we thought, well, and Nicole told me the story and I thought, yeah, well, big deal. Somebody's going to send a letter from the East Coast and the warden here doesn't even know who that is. So. And the fact is, uh, the letter got here, uh, there was a change of wardens. And uh, so the mail piled up on the desk, and Warden Josie came in, and I'm sure there was a big pile on the desk. And she sorted through it, and I think she was afraid not to open something that was from Sister Pauline. That might have been, she needed, she needed some points there, so like I'm not throwing that one out, because that could be the end. And so uh, she opened that, and then she uh, handed it off to Captain Boren. And then uh, Captain Corr looked at it and got together with Lieutenant Nolan. And I just found notes from our first meeting. I'll, you know, I'll have to tell you about it later, but I found the notes from our first meeting. And uh, that, that actually is how it started. That letter wasn't even addressed to Warden Josie. It was maybe junk mail, I mean, as far as she was concerned. But guess what? That got saved from the trash can, and that's how it started. So we knew we were on pretty firm ground when this sister has that much power to get the warden to open the doors to the program and its history since then. But uh, thank you, Warden, for your part not, not throwing out the trash. Was, yeah. That was a great, great start there. But uh, Warden just literally opened the doors for us. And I had worked for the state, and I had a little bit of familiarity in the prison system, and I thought, this is going to be so bureaucratic. And, and, I, I think half of them, because I only had one request in the beginning, is don't slow walk me. That was the only request I had, because I get impatient. My wife can let you know that that's true. Oh, she's denying that. It's a good wife. Okay. 
So uh, then we get uh, the dog father there, and uh, he's, he's kind of our special forces operative. I don't really want to know what he does and how he does it. The warden doesn't either, but it, things happen. And so he's kind of our special forces commander. But there's a lot of people that come together, and, and I think representatives from all those different areas are here today. Um, so we have our breeders. Uh, do we have a breeder here today? I'm not sure. Did Kathy come? Um, What's that? Yeah, I couldn't make it today, but yes. that's important. Oh, Janet's here. Where's Janet? I, I saw her. Janet, thank you. She's representing Kathy's Labs, I'm sure. And uh, Janet's been a faithful volunteer for us for a long time and just really invested in, in what we're doing. So thank you. So we have readers. Uh, we have donors who make this possible. Uh, it, it takes uh, money to do this. It costs us about ten dollars to $12,000 uh, per dog. Uh, if you go to other service dog programs, they're going to quote you about forty to 50000 per dog. But this program lowers our cost with you guys providing the training and, and all of that. So we're able to do it for about a fourth of the cost that, that other people do. And uh, we, we have different organizations that uh, help us. There's some folks here from uh, Nichols Foundation who have been big supporters. Uh, we, have, we have people uh, that just, just step up and say, here I am. Uh, we have some people from Top Dog. Where's Top Dog people? Oh, there they are right back here. Top Dog Coffee, Morro Bay, and Cayucas. I got it right. That's going to say Cambria. I wasn't sure. So Top Dog Coffee, thank you. Uh, they, they haven't been here. They haven't seen, seen what we're doing. So thanks for being here. And uh, Idlers um, actually sponsored uh, Hope. And uh, she couldn't be here. Jennifer Idler couldn't be here today. But they were a big help. Uh, our puppy raisers, how many puppy raisers do we have here? Okay, good. And you can tell which ones are the puppy raisers for the dogs that are graduating because they're using more Kleenex than the others. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our, you know, uh, veterans uh, that, uh, that work with us, uh, we have volunteers, lots of volunteers, that helps a lot. Uh, first responders are all part of the part of the combination. In fact, today we're presenting our first dog to a first responder um, to uh, a law enforcement officer, and uh, we're we're happy to do that. And uh, our board, um, we have a number of uh, folks on the advisory board. I know Robin's here. Anybody else? Who else is here from board? Yeah. So we have people uh, involved with that. So there's a lot of people. And uh, our new life staff here, Nicole, Courtney, and Rosa, you all know them and what a, what a great team they are. Um, you know, sometimes I, we refer to, I hear our inmate trainers. I don't, I don't use that term. I use our inside trainers. Um, you guys, you know. We don't use that term either. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? We don't use that term either. Yeah, well, that's OK. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, in looking at this this morning, I thought, you know, there's a lot of odd couples involved in this thing here. We've got cops, we've got inmates, we've got social workers, uh, we've got lifers, we've got correction people, we've got community people, we've got nuns, we've got artists, we've got educators. It's a weird group. And, uh, but uh, here, we've, we've shed those identities. We just come together as a team and and from many different angles, but we work together and we, we just really drop that identity for a common cause. And we're all partners in, in this life-saving work and, and I just, I thank you all for that. Uh, I couldn't do this uh, without my wife, Karen, who's right over here, Karen. And Karen brought her friend, Hannah, who's, who's not even been here for the first time. And she's, she's getting to see what we're doing. But, you know, I, just a short thought, um, going over this this morning was that uh, my greatest thanks really is is kind of the unseen stuff that came together to make this work. Uh, my thanks is, is to our God and provider for assembling this unlikely bunch of ragamuffins that produced the miracle of these life-saving four-legged servants that are graduating today and their new best friends who have faithfully served our country and community. 
We're equally thankful for the gifts our inside trainers and staff have received, as well as the veterans and police officer who will be receiving these special gifts today. Um, so there's, I just, I just wanted to just kind of remind everybody what a what a huge group of different uh, kinds of people from all walks of life make this happen, and that's the success of the program, the diversity that we have, and everybody being involved for the same cause, very focused on what's happening.